Uh, welcome back, everybody. <laughs> um, we're about to uh, got pop into our third and final venture of the evening, uh, which I've entitled The Silvered Peaks Historical Society, subtitle All Reliable. Uh, but before we do that, as always, we are going to introduce our heroes. Without further ado, uh, I give the Oldman McWizard face, the monstrologist Mick researcher face. Oldman, how are you? Hello, Beat! Uh, it is, uh, it is good to, uh, good to hear you. Old oh, oh, tell me, what's new? I know I'm going to be in trouble soon because I'm talking to you, but it's fine. <laughs> why, why would you be in trouble for that? Oh, you'll see. I'll see too. This always seems to happen. <laughs> I'm convinced that you and Jeremy are just bad omens, but... <laughs> What is an old man gonna do? At least I can draw stuff. Yes, I, I suppose that it, you do often get put into some fairly dangerous situations after you talk to me. I'm sorry that I have to be the bearer of such ill tidings, but nonetheless, it is nice to hear from you, Oldman. Oh, yes, and I heard that the historical society has called for me again. Yes, uh, absolutely. I mean, the historical society, uh, they would request to Oldman... Would, uh, only wizard face is such a, an accomplished researcher. Oh, yes. Last time they called me, I got to find a missing link. Uh, well, we'll have to see what uh, they have for you this time. Uh, Oldman, welcome back. Thanks for having me. You know, kind of the danger at all, but oh, thanks. <laughs> uh, but of course, but of course. Uh, and next we have, uh, I feel like it's been a while since we've seen Anna Dolce Blue Beats, uh, Confectious Porcelain Princess. Anna Dolce, how are you? I am doing quite fine. Um, so, uh, Anna Dolce, tell me, what's, uh, what's new in your uh, neck of the woods? How are things going with, of course, Confectia and uh, your little kind of corner of the Candy Kingdom? Well, everything's been doing pretty good on my end. Uh, the girls that uh, me and Sugar have adopted have been having fun. Uh, we did go see an uh, old man during the solstice, and the, the, the girls said they had a, quite a liking to him. Really? Uh, p popular with the, uh, the various children of uh, Confectious Kingdom. Uh, Oldman is a, a gregarious sword, I'm not surprised. Hey, don't forget about me! Uh, yes, and uh, Sugar is going to be joining us for this adventure. Uh, she, I don't think she'll be of much uh, help. What does this mean? Uh, hey, don't, don't, don't count sugar out, sugar. Uh, to speak to you directly, I have faith that you will, uh, that you will find use and be uh, impactful here in this upcoming uh, adventure. Yeah, it better be because, and those is gonna be my wife soon. Did you say your wife? Uh, yes. Uh, confection and well, a lot of people have already pretty much uh, asked me and sugar to pretty much get married. This, this is a uh, an arranged marriage of sorts. It seems like you're being uh, boxed into, Anna Dolcia. Well, uh, to be fair, I mean, we have known each other a long time, and I, I'm not against it, and I don't think she is. Yeah. Oh, well, well, I'm very happy for the two of you. Congratulations on your uh, upcoming nuptials. Uh, nup nuptials, there we go. Uh, it's, uh, um, and... We have already set the date to uh, the second day of the fate. Feylands Midsummer Festive Jamboree, which is uh, sometime oh, in the fun. summer. But of course, but of course, I, I think in the middle of the summer. Well, for now, Anna Dolce, uh, I'm very happy to hear uh, about your your new love, so to speak. And, uh, well, welcome tonight. Next Thank we you have... So much. Oh, but of course, but of course. Uh, next we have... Whoosh, whoosh, how are you? Yeah, well, you're pretty, doing pretty well, actually, yeah. Uh, nothing too eventful. I got hired a lot for the Christmas holidays, you know, dance and sing. That was, that was pretty cool. Oh, you got and hired a cash. lot? Yeah, I, I did. I did think that you said that you got high a lot, which maybe isn't entirely out of the question, hanging out with the Dread Rocks as much as you do. Um, but, um... The things you, you have hired. to do to stay in business, huh? <laughs> uh, and there... Uh, yeah, I imagine there's a lot of work uh, around that kind of time of year, uh, with all the holidays and people needing entertainment. Um, kind of get sick uh, of the Christmas songs after a while, but you know, <laughs> money's money. Yeah, I mean, 
you got to play the classics sometimes. You got to work your way up before people want to hear your own originals. Does does have any originals? Uh, any any like? Kind of... Uh, well, you got the you got the twelve days of D and D, of course. Oh, the twelve D. You do have an original. Is that a Solstice Carol, or is that just um uh, an unrelated uh, track? I, I could sing a bit if you want. I, I'd love to hear it. Okay, find it now. You might, might have to come back to me. Have a go find my notes. <laughs> All right. Uh, perhaps, perhaps at some point, uh, you will uh, break it out. Let us know. Uh, do so at your uh, leisure. But for now, whilst you look for that, uh, we'll move on. Last but not least, uh, to Estrella, the Keeper Hello. of the Secrets. Um, Estrella, also uh, a lot of adventures I haven't seen in a while here. Estrella, it's good to have you back. Um, how have you been? What have you been up to? I've actually been across the sea. I was called back to my uh, community when they realized I had uh, uh, not told them where I was going. Uh, I mean, I would expect nothing less from the Keeper of Secrets, but were they um, were they in particularly upset at you? Uh, a little bit, but you know, uh, I I'm still a minor, so I have to do what they tell me right now. How uh, how old are you, Estrella? Uh, I'm like, seventeen. Oh, so it is. Uh, it will be soon that you are no longer uh, under the uh, the thrall of these individuals, so to speak. Uh, I don't mean to use so strong a word if it isn't like that. Well, they let me come back. Um, yeah, well, that is uh, good news. It's, I'm glad to know that you are uh, here adventuring once again in the service of Bartholomew. You are uh, one of the more steadfast individuals here. Oh, so, I appreciate that. Uh, but of course. Uh, Estrella, just between you and me, uh, as the Keeper of Secrets, is there anything you've learned recently? Anything you could perhaps share? Uh, although, perhaps if you tell me, it would be unkeeping it. But do you have any hot secrets? Any hot gossip? Uh, yeah. Uh, there's uh, two, actually. Oh, Two facts I can share. One is that um, the reason I've been sent back by my community is that there is a certain group of artifacts that might be making their way to uh, Bartholomew's store, Ooh. and I have to make sure to uh, that they don't fall into the wrong hands. Intriguing. Uh, I hope to, uh, well... I like to keep an eye on all things around Bartholomew's shop. Uh, I'll, uh, it's a good piece of rumor. And you said you had a second as well. Uh, yes, I am. Uh... Uh... Again. Right, I am on the search for uh, uh, an old... If you do not wish to uh, to share at this time, perhaps the information uh, too sensitive, you may uh, hold for a moment. Uh, yes. Very well. Um, I got the that, song, anyway. Um Oh yeah, please, please uh, share with us your solstice carol. Uh, but for a brief moment, Estrella, it is good to have you back once more. Welcome. Good to be back. Uh, whoosh, please. All right, we'll just skip to the twelfth day. It'll save time. Oh yeah, please. On the twelfth day of D and D, my DM threw at me twelve dry destroying eleven pixies prancing ten cultists plotting nine lemurs fighting eight mages <laughs> casting seven scarecrows guarding six cricks are digging five goblin hordes four thieving bandits three cockatrice two hungry trolls and a terrorist destroying the city. Uh, absolutely wonderful. Of course, I heard that was you singing underwater, as that is when your voice is at its most beautiful. Uh, and uh, that is awful. <laughs> uh, a point of uh, a point of inspiration unto you uh, for that song. That was that was lovely. Uh, thank you. Um, so now that I've been inspired, I myself have been inspired. I think I have a D twelve to use at a later time. Um, and uh, let us. I have, to have one about carts if you ever want it. Yeah, that's gonna come back here. That song's gonna come back to haunt you. You're gonna get uh, a monster is gonna get a slightly higher attack roll. Um, but let us uh, hop into. If it's on that list. Has a higher chance to hit me. Yeah, I'll be down for that. Uh, 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 but let us hop into our adventure proper. Uh, you are meeting up with the 
dwarves, uh, as you are already familiar with them, Oldman, of the Silvered Peaks Historical Society. In particularly, um, you'll be looking for the leader of this particular society, uh, society the chairman, uh, Penelope Slate Speaker, uh, and their particular uh, project that they're involved in right now is in the Candy Kingdom, specifically um, a bit south of the Big Rock Candy Mountains near the Cinnamon Mines is where they've established themselves. As you walk up, it is, as it often is in the Candy Kingdom, a bitter and cold day outside. Uh, the snow kind of rages past you with its flavor, uh, its flavorless ice cream, um, and the ground beneath your feet is is packed very high. And in the distance, as you've been traveling for some time, both all me teleported you close, but there's no uh, kind of teleportation point quite close enough to this particular camp that's been made at fairly impromptu. Um, you approach, and even despite the uh, the terrible snowstorm outside, um, you see the various dwarves of the society um, kind of walking amongst the tents that they have set up, all of them sort of humming to themselves, ever industrious, ever working, uh, towards uh, finding new, uh, newer and newer knowledge here in this space. Um, you can hear, you know, the sounds of them humming. Uh, whoosh, uh, you can hear them kind of all humming one kind of you know, workmen's song as they're going about, you know, moving things between tents. Uh, the doors, ho, 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 uh, And they all just kind of sing in unison as they move around. Um, there is, oh. yeah, it's very, uh, it, it's very, uh, jolly. it's very upbeat, uh, jolly indeed, uh, again, despite the kind of the terrible weather. And uh, the oh. weather applies, you're not sure if it's, um, well, for those of you who've been in the Candy Kingdom, of course, the ice cream that falls is bland and completely flavorless. Uh, and you expect the ground to be completely coated in snow. Uh, and you're not sure if it's the worn footprints, but there's also something that you don't usually see in the Candy Kingdom. There's just a lot of mud uh, all kind of tracked around where they've been walking in, in footprints. It's kind of seeping through. Um, the ground kind of squelches with each of your footsteps through the space. Uh, it's one, just not chocolate. Um, there's one way to find out. I'm gonna try. Um, all right, you kind of dip your hand down into it, uh, and as you kind of lick your finger, it's uh, a very... It is an extremely sweet chocolate. Um, it is one of the best chocolates that you've ever tasted in your life, like unnaturally sweet. Um, and it's, it's mm. warm, despite the weather. Uh, it kind of, still in its liquid form, it seems to be warm almost just from within itself. Um, and it kind of blows you away in this moment. Your whole body kind of warms up a little bit just from uh, eating this tiny little bit of it. Um, and that, that's good. Not mad, guys. Chocolate. Delicious. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, great. Uh, Someone's getting uh, calories tonight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as you're eating it, and usually the, the chocolate that you find outside on, like, the rocks and stuff, it's it's very bitter and uh, and just inedible, more or less, but this is good. Uh, and one of the dwarves that's outside, they have a big kind of keg set up to keep all of the dwarves running on uh, the alcohol that they need to keep their beards pointy, uh, kind of calls out to you, Ho oh, there! Ho oh, there! Ho oh, there! <laughs> Can I interest any of you in a drink this afternoon? Hello there! Oh, ho, ho, look who it is! It's Old Men McWizard Face! We heard you were coming around! I recently read your new paper on the Tiger of Terrible Truths. I gotta tell you, one of the finest pieces that I've seen in a long time completely changed the way I think about monsters. Yes, it's a lot easier to learn about them when you have a small dragon antagonizing it all the time. Hey! <laughs> oh, that sounds like a story that I don't entirely understand, but can I get any of you a drink? Uh, he kind of holds up. Uh, would you there? Uh, you there, would you like one? Uh, hands went out to you, uh, Astrea. Uh, big uh, kind of frothing mug. Thanks, I guess. Um, uh, but, but of course, but of course. Uh, uh, <laughs> more the merrier. He pours another one for himself. He goes to give it to someone else, but he decides he's just going to pound this one. Guzzles it, goes to pour another. Uh, so you're probably looking for Penelope. She told me, well, we're on to something pretty big here. Uh, she's right in that tent over yonder, uh, but, well, it's best that she explain it. Uh, and he goes about to anyone who wants it, pouring another kind of big mug. You see, the Do you have one of those tiny kegs like you had last time? You want a whole keg? That's my that's my friend right there. That's uh, and he kind of reaches down and, and pulls out from the back. It is uh, a keg with a small tap uh, on it and a handle built into the side of it uh, to drink out of the keg as if it were a glass. 
uh, and he hands it over to you. You feel it <laughs> heft in your arms a little bit from the weight. Um, and, oh, uh, these silver beads make the best mead. <laughs> ale! I don't know what this is, it's great! Oh, it's a mix. It's actually mead and ale combined together. It's something new we're working on it. We call it mail. Why don't you call it the meal? Uh, he kind of looks down, uh, and uh, you see him kind of, like, think for a moment, and then he leans into a tent next to him, and he holds up the mug, and he just goes, Frederick! Meal! Uh, and you just hear another voice call out from in the tent, Of course! Of course! Uh, and he goes, That's why you're the best, thank you. Uh, just a water for me, thanks. <laughs> oh, that's fine. I guess. Uh, he hands you like an eight ounce glass <laughs> of water. <laughs> on the job, can't get too drunk. But thanks anyway. Maybe after. Um, and Osha is like probably like walking. Uh, I would say she, she's riding on Mo, uh, Lady Molly, her sticky puppy, just going around and. Uh, but of course. Yeah, Sugar probably like uh, has caught uh, like probably brought out some little spoon or something, caught ice cream on it. Sprinkle some very uh, sweet, sugary pixie dust on the ice cream that's been feeding uh, Anna Joel shit yet. Yes, very good. Um, yeah, you're eating the ice cream, and the ice cream, like I said, it's it's completely flavorless and banned, but with the extra sugar that you're putting on it, the toppings, it becomes tolerable and even, you know, pretty good with the care that uh, is put into it. Um, and, um, yeah, uh, you guys are kind of escorted. Uh, would you like me to lead you to her? Uh, Penelope's very busy. She doesn't like a lot of intruders, but obviously she needs you here. She needs your help. Like I said, something very big this time. Uh, yeah, uh, sure. what, anyway. One question. Uh, is there any of the dwarves recognizable from when Anadosia went uh, through the coup area? Um, the, um, the, the Copper City? Um, these dwarves, um, you can see, like, from some of their, like, insignias and stuff, these dwarves appear to be from Ag. They are from the Silver City. Um, uh, and you don't, uh, seem to recognize any of the signs of the, uh, the copper dwarves upon them. Alright, so none of them that were helping us explore the ancient city that was known as... Um... Oh, did you come down with some of the, uh, uh yeah, if you came, I'm sorry, if you came down with some of the silver dwarves to coup, uh, these are, uh, these are some of the dwarves that are um, from the same city, but these dwarves were probably not the exact same ones that you went with uh, at that time, but definitely of the same region. All right, all right. So, yes, yeah, so you'll just, like, just continue, like, walking or following along, I guess. Okay. Um, yeah, he leads you to the largest tent in the space, uh, and it seems exorbitant for a researcher to have a tent like this uh, until you kind of walk in and you see kind of set out uh, upon the ground uh, a huge, uh, even before the individual who uh, has kind of hired you for this quest um, kind of speaks to you, you, you first notice this massive, what looks like a mosaic um, that has been put out on the ground. There are pieces of it that are missing here and there, um, but it is uh, rainbowed and colored, it, it is multifaceted, and there's just tons of different kind of pieces that have all been placed together, and it seems to form uh, a mural of what looks like the Candy Kingdom to a certain extent, um, but it is not the Candy Kingdom because it is too beautiful to be the Candy Kingdom. Um, the Big Rock Candy Mountains are not covered, and the entire space isn't covered with this, like, flavorless ice cream. You can see just the tops of a mountain that seems to be made of chocolate has kind of globules, beautiful-looking globules of ice cream, and they seem to be in all different flavors. Um, you okay. see... Um, you see kind of the, the peppermint forest kind of curves upwards, but green kind of uh, light licorice gl grass grows up amongst it. It, it appears to be... Um, a much less frigid and more beautiful version of the Candy Kingdom that is pictured on this mosaic. Uh, and the uh, the dwarves is in the space right now. She's kind of leaning over one part of it as it's spread out all on the floor. Uh, it's probably about 30 feet uh, in, in kind of radius uh, as, it, as it's mostly circular. Uh, and she's kind of like leaning over and examining one spot and she looks like she's trying to like place another piece in it. Uh, and she uh, kind of turns around as you come in. Oh, hello there, hello there. Uh, 
I am, for anyone who have not met before, uh, I am Penelope Slate Speaker. It is nice to meet all of you. I am the Chancellor of the Silvered Peaks Historical Society. It is a pleasure, I uh, am sure, to meet all of you. Uh, and she holds out hands uh, to kind of, uh, she's very kind of formal, uh, to shake all of your hands. Oh, Penelope, we know each other better than that. Come here. Uh, she kind of <laughs> feels, she looks like a little bit uncomfortable, but she kind of goes in and gives you like, uh, like a single pat hug uh, on the back uh, and kind of pulls back a little bit, uh, kind of seeming to uh, take pride or enjoyment in her personal space. Uh, but she looks at you, yes, Oldman, it is uh, wonderful to see you again. Uh, yes, I, no Glenn McMath face is doing wonderful in my basement. I was going to, uh, I was going to ask how things were going. Uh, have you learned anything more? You see, when we were... I'm sorry. Uh, we have business today. Uh, I would love to discuss in more. Uh, I would love to discuss that individual in more detail. But I think I am on the verge of the greatest breakthrough uh, of perhaps uh, my life. I'm sorry. I didn't catch uh, all of your names. Um, obviously, I already am familiar with Oldman here. Um, what was uh, yours? She turns first uh, to you, Anna Dolce. Yes, sir. Yes, I am Anna Dolce Bluebeads, and uh, this little pixie on my head is. I'm Sugar Pastry of the Pastry Kingdom. Very good. Uh, very good to meet both of you. That is actually good that we have a resident of the Candy Kingdom here. I had re requested that um, if I think, well, perhaps you will be able to offer a little bit of insight on this. Um, most of the locals are fairly cagey about, about the manners in which they address some of the issues here in the Candy Kingdom. Uh, and she turns uh, next to you, Estrella. Um, I don't believe that we have met before either. Um, uh, what was your name? Oh, uh, hi. Uh, Estrella looks up. She's still holding a giant frothing mug, uh, kind oh, of gosh. awkwardly, like it's going to explode in her hand at any moment. <laughs> Would you like me to take that? I I'm sorry. They can be a little bit aggressive with their alcohol. Uh, there are a lot of there are a lot of heavy drinkers here. Oh, don't worry. I got it. All right, she'll hand it over to whoever's hand is the closest. All right, uh, yeah, Oldman, I imagine, uh, grabs it up quicker. Uh, again, I, I'm very sorry if they bothered you. Um, sorry, what, uh, what is your particular skill set? What, what, uh, what are your abilities as an adventurer? I'm just, I'll be coming with you on this particular adventure, so I'd like to know my companions a bit. She'll look around uh, at her companions. And she'll say, well, the only one here who can sort of speak to my abilities is probably Old Man. But uh, my main job is to make sure everyone get ba gets back alive and in one piece. Australia, here is great in an arena! <laughs> Very good. Um, I, I like to think... Um, there won't be any trouble like that, then hopefully that skill does not come up. Uh, but you're going into a very old place, and, well, that's why I've hired you, is in case something like that does. Oh, uh, don't and... worry, I talked to Pete! Something like that will surely happen! <laughs> uh, she just seems to, like, it just seems to, like, fuzz out, and she doesn't even notice it when you say the word Pete. Uh, it's, it's, it's like she didn't hear the word, or it's odd. Uh, and then, then uh, she turns uh, towards you, and... You, uh, your name was, uh, what was your name again, sir? Looking at you, Woosh. Uh, I'm Wooshisha. Or as at that you people pronounce it, I pronounce it Wooshisha. Yeah, yeah, it's correctly pronounced, and I'll bow. Pleasure to meet you. Uh, it is nice to meet you as well. Uh, I see the instrument that you carry, perhaps. Well, we have a, we have a number of singers here. I'm sure they'd love to play with you after we're done with business. Uh, you're all welcome to stay as long as you want. I'm sure we'll have more work to do after we've excavated this particular location. Um, but please look at this. And she points now to the huge mosaic on the ground. We've been digging up pieces of this for some time now. Um, all throughout uh, the region of the Candy Kingdom. Um, most of them were deposited in one location, uh, but the total spread of the pieces of this mosaic um, well, it was over five miles. When we found, uh, when we found the, the various things, and I've been assembling it very carefully, it pictured a candy kingdom that was idyllic and beautiful. And it coincides with texts that we found that have stated that, well, 
The Candy Kingdom at one time was not this flavorless, uh, terrible, cold, bitter place. It, it was at one time this, uh, and she gestures to the, the mosaic before her. And I think we found where we might locate a piece of that Candy Kingdom. Uh, and she points over on the um, on the mosaic to what looks to be a uh, uh, it, it looks to be just a huge geyser of chocolate that is kind of rushing out. Uh, an old text that we found from uh, a citizen of the Candy Kingdom, um, one of the peppermint people, uh, apparently. Um, I don't know if that was a particular uh, a particular faction of lizard men or. Regardless, uh, in their text, they mentioned a place called Old Reliable, uh, a great fountain of chocolate that, well, it <sighs> sprouted up e every day at almost precisely the same time, and the chocolate was the most incredible and sweetest chocolate that one has ever tasted. We think the whole Candy Kingdom was like that, but now you see below you. Uh, I don't know if you noticed when you walked in uh, and... She refers whoosh to you, uh, who you're probably still like licking your fingers a little bit from some of the chocolate that you had. Oh yeah, the chocolate? Yeah, it's delicious. Like, can I get some of that to go? You can take as much as you want when we find the geyser, because it's seeping up through the ground. I think it is somewhere here beneath the citizen mines. Now, this map, it, it is perfect. It is scale of the Candy Kingdom, which means that following it, well, we should know above ground where the fountain was, and well, sure enough. It's seeping through the ground. We'll go down in the cinnamon mines and find it. Can uh, to... can Anadosha make a like a history check? Um, Probably uh, with some knowledge from like sugar and like some of the people on the yeah, Fae, absolutely yeah, with the Fey Wild side of the uh, Candy um, Kingdom. This would be more actually on the regular side, but absolutely make a history check because you are a citizen of the Candy Kingdom, and this might be something that you know a little bit about. Seventeen. Um, yeah, you have, like, heard stories growing up, Anadolsha, about a candy kingdom that was perfect and beautiful, uh, and, you know, it, it's, you always kind of thought of it as, like, this sort of escapism of fables for kids, uh, talking about, you know, how the ice cream was any flavor that you could dream and it didn't snow and pile up over to your house so that you couldn't get out in the winters uh and it wasn't this horrible bitter cold place uh it wasn't the like the savage kind of wild place where these like various tribes of lizard men roamed around it was just a paradise uh and, and that's kind of there are a lot of different fables and, and stories that take place in it um but um you kind of always assume that, again, they were just stories, but this is kind of resonating true to you a little bit. Meanwhile, well, Oldman is sketching the mirrors. Um, and at this point, uh, go ahead and roll me that uh, roll me that sketch check, that painter's tools check. Uh, very good. Um, you have sketched the mural. Uh, in this time, Oldman has become so deft, like... It's not in color, obviously, it's it's a sketch, um, but you have made like almost a, a perfect map of whatever, uh, what she believes is this kind of primordial early candy uh, uh, candy kingdom part of the North. Um, I don't yeah. really have value for things that are none of, you know, monsters, but I suppose this may be useful underground. Yeah, uh, and it was like looking over the mural, like, uh, uh, like she's kind of trying to compare it to the current, the like candy kingdom in her head trying to see like where the like, little pop her hometown would be on the map which is what for her it would have been like around the very edge of the candy kingdom somewhere like uh, yeah. uh closer towards the bear deck um you, you kind of look over uh and it looks like it's near kind of uh, the Ginger Dead Hills, uh, and kind of uh, what you know now, at least, is the as the Ginger Dead, uh, the Gingerbread Hills, and the Ginger Dead Lands, uh, and then also um, you see around where your town would be. There's actually like a huge plateau that sticks up that looks like it's made of just a giant layer cake, um, and that's kind of like around where you would be. You think roughly there, but there's certainly nothing like that on the landscape now, uh, as it yeah. stands. Hmm, strange. Um, uh... I guess comparing this world to where I live now, like, I guess that cake there, and she, like, kind of points to it, either has been completely eaten or just completely disappeared. Um, again, there's there's so many questions that we don't know yet. 
Um, but I hope to answer them now, shall we? Sure. That's good. Uh, uh, and she kind of marches out uh, and leads you uh, once again into the kind of the the, fr- the freezing ice cream wind uh, until eventually um, I- until eventually you kind of reach uh, the entrance to the cinnamon mines. Uh, there's just a a rich, almost overpowering smell of cinnamon. You kind of have to you kind of all like choke a little bit even as you enter into the space. Uh, <coughs> it is uh, <coughs> yeah, it's it's uh, it's a little tough to breathe. Um, and it is lit by kind of lanterns that the dwarves have seemed to have placed in and refreshed in here. It smells like Mira got out the candles again. <laughs> it smells like burning cinnamon. Um, exactly. <laughs> that is. Um, uh, Penelope looks to you, Astrea. That is um, precisely correct. That is what they've done here for a very long time. The cinnamon mine's composition is uh, a little bit. Uh, looser than perhaps that of stone, uh, and burning it away is possibility. They did that for years. Um, that's how they mined out a lot of this, but the particular place um, that we have located, uh, we've been doing a little bit of uh, excavating of our own for some time now, uh, and, well, we've come across this. Um, and she kind of uh, leads you through the cinnamon mines, uh, and eventually you reach uh, a wall uh, that appears to be made out of just chocolate, uh, and the chocolate on it is kind of carved in and engraved with, like, pictographs uh, and various kind of runes. Um, initial kind of looking at them, it doesn't seem to be uh, of a language that any of you would recognize. Um, but, um, yeah, there's also kind of, like, just different, um, there's just kind of, like, different pictures uh, all kind of carved into this. Um, and she says, this wall... This chocolate is impossibly hard. Um, We believe it to be enchanted in some way, and we haven't been able to work our way past it. We think beyond this wall lies, well, something that hasn't been touched in a long time, at the very least. Um, We don't know what we find. We're we're hoping to find this this all reliable. Uh, But whatever it is, we need to figure out how to get past it. Um, Yeah, and there's just a uh, a chocolate wall before you. Is that stabbing it? Wait, wait. Um, this is a geyser, right? Uh, old reliable, we believe, is a geyser. Yes, deep underground. So, Estrella looks up and down the tunnel, and then she says, um, "So we should probably uh, make a, a pathway for the chocolate that's going to rush out if we break through the wall. Um, Otherwise, we'll drown in chocolate." She kind of looks at you and, and thinks, for a that was a concern that we had as well, um, but uh, try tapping on it. Tap. Yeah, uh, you go over and tap on it, and uh, on the other side, it appears to be, um, it, it doesn't resonate like it's in particularly thick, uh, and it sounds kind of hollow on the other side, like it's just empty. Have you beyond. tried melting it? Um, we've tried mm. melting it, absolutely. And there is going to heft her war pick and attempt to like a miner, just yeah. hit it. Oh, uh, and Osha like uh, has, would like to stop them from says, uh, uh, maybe I could, uh, no, I might not recognize the language, maybe we could do like a bit of, uh, what's that word, deciphering? Um, well, as you're saying that, I think Estrella was already like heavy into that swing, uh, and, Yeah, uh, I wanted to stab it as well. Um, yeah, you're also, you go to kind of poke it with a rapier. Astray, you bring the, the mining pick downwards. Uh, it does not make even, um, uh, it does not make even a scratch. Uh, you feel the kind of shock reverberate up your arm as it hits just what feels like solid force. Oh man, does it make sparks too? Um, a little bit. Uh, the, the sparks that kind of come off of it, uh, are kind of pictured a little bit blue and you actually see like a touch of green within them. Um, uh, and she kind of speaks up. Yes, we, we believe it is uh, we believe it is magically enchanted. We uh, are unsure of, of how to proceed. Oh, so is going to shrug, uh, throw the pick over her shoulder, and say, this is your job, McWizard Face. I can't do anything with magic. Uh... Open sesame! Um, you kind of hold your hands out and say, open sesame. Uh, and for a brief moment, uh, Penelope kind of looks up, I'm just like, was it that simple? And the wall, <laughs> the wall remains. Uh... All right, uh, and Osha will just like uh, wants to look over the whatever language is uh, written on and just 
attempt to decipher it if there's like anyone else who would like to help as well that would be i guess in something all right I mean, um do i recognize the alphabet because i would help though the alphabet appears to be just like that that was the why the reason i said um that none of you guys would know it is because the alphabet's not even like an alphabet that any of you have heard of um uh, uh, it seems it, to be d just a different language of a, a different like people uh, well, yeah, like, uh, Anadosha is just, like, well, wants to just try to decipher it. I mean, yes, like, uh, but looking at some of the pictograms, go ahead and make me a, um, investigation check, uh, as you're looking over. Uh, anyone who wants to do this may. Have you tried teleporting through it? Can I cast Comprehend Languages as a ritual? <laughs> um, you can, um, yeah, absolutely. Um, you begin ca uh, casting Comprehend Languages as a ritual. Um, you are looking over it, uh, and, and the pictographs that you see on it, um, there are a lot of, like, kind of odd-looking people. You see people um, uh, that are kind of pictured that are just in, in just strange, very... Uh, the art is in very kind of geometrical shapes for all of them, uh, and... Like you know, the people's are the people just appear to be like squares or triangles or or just kind of circles, which is definitely strange. Um, and um, there is one image of what appears to be a geyser. Uh, there are a lot of people there, kind of drinking, uh, drinking in it, uh, and kind of that, that's what the symbols uh, kind of show is is people like drinking from this geyser. Uh, yeah. So yeah, and also like looking over and go and just like looks at Pen uh, Penelope. What's her name? Uh, slight speaker, Penelope's fine. Yeah, uh, Penelope, uh, look at over these, it looks like, and this is just my theory that this old, old reliable might have been, uh, a place of worship for some hard candy-like people, so that's just a guess. Um, your guess is as good as mine at this point. Um, perhaps there's something to that theory. Um, and maybe some type of worship would be the thing that we need to do? Uh, I, I don't... We haven't been able to translate it yet. We have tried teleporting through, um, or um, we've tried teleporting other objects through. Uh, we were a little bit too nervous about just sending a person to the other side into the unknown, uh, but the object was unable to pass through this barrier. Um, That's sad. There goes my yeah, and uh, 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 I probably like, look down at uh, Molly and see if Molly just like licked the door. Um. Uh, Molly kind of goes up and, and kind of licks the door, uh, and you see as they lick it, it actually seems like some of the chocolate kind of comes off. I might look. <laughs> interesting. Uh, 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 everyone, I think we might have a way to get through. And she uh, like, uh, she like kind of points down uh, towards where Molly is just licking through the door as much as she can. Uh, I, yeah, I, Molly I is like. It seems fairly thin, uh, and it actually looks like uh, Molly has started to actually look a hole. You can just see kind of um, a, a little bit I of light it. coming through it on the other side as well. Uh, wow. my figure. Let's do this. Um, just like it's a very small one, though. You'd have to, like, really kind of get into it uh, at, like, a higher level since, you know, uh, just a small pup. Uh, but right. it looks like right. eating the door is the way past. Small oh, pup with a yeah. big tongue. With uh, my water, can I warm it up and throw it at it and see what happens? Um, yeah, you warm up the water and throw it at it, it just kind of falls off the door. Uh, the, the wall is warmer than it was before, but it doesn't, like, curse through. It somehow knows we're licking it. Very strange. Oh well. Uh, alright, yeah, you kind of lick into it until you can get a solid grasp, uh, and then you find, like, you can just bite into it. Uh, and the chocolate is that same incredible delicious chocolate that you ate from the mud before. Uh, it is, uh, it is easy to do. It is easy to put yourself about the task. What I'm gonna uh, do as... is, I'll bite chunks and just sort of put them back out and put a little bag for later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're now just, like, taking chunks off of it with your teeth. You watch as this big kind of tur uh, this big kind of turtle man is there, just essentially a snapping turtle in this moment, uh, breaking off pieces of the wall. Um, and um, before long, Penelope says that sometimes it's... Um, sometimes you just need some luck. Uh, and she kind of looks down and kind of like pets the dog on the head. Uh, and um, yeah, her hand gets sticky. Uh, she kind of pulls her hand back, kind of wipes it a little bit, not expecting that. Uh, um, 
then let's continue. Okay, uh, guys, I'm done with the ritual. I can. Uh, oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. Uh, um. Uh, uh, is, is it dark inside the other side? Uh, it is actually lit on the inside. Um, you see kind of. Uh, lanterns on the wall uh, and the lanterns seem to be shaped like lollipops uh, and they glow in kind of various colors uh, there's yellows and reds uh, and greens that are kind of like glowing in alternating patterns casting odd lights along what appears to be a completely chocolate corridor um, Oldman uh, as you kind of finish your comprehend language uh, you see kind of like in among the chunks that remains like it's hard to read it because there's just not a lot of it left uh, but you see uh, uh, some statements about things like um uh, kind of the eternal flavor. You see something about um, you, see, you see something about purity of taste bud, uh, but it's kind of like just like these small odd snippets that you can't quite uh, you can't quite make out because a lot of it was destroyed. Um, well, all of this seems really cultish, like that one cloud place. Um, and uh, as you continue, um, before you lies uh, a massive. Um, uh, a massive kind of door uh, at the end of this hallway, uh, a, a huge kind of vaulted door, uh, and atop it, a balcony. Uh, and as you kind of step and grow closer, uh, you see um, kind of some shifting movement. The balcony is unlit, uh, unlike the area before you, um, but you see some kind of shifting movement uh, atop of it. Uh, what do you all do? How high is there? The, how high is a balcony? Uh, the balcony is about um, uh, twenty feet up. Does okay, the dark uh, vision just, change just that at all? Oh, so uh, Anadol will probably like look to uh, Molly, like uh, get there where she'll just dash up the wall and like onto the balcony. All right, um, dark vision. Yeah, you can make out some shapes uh, up on top of it. You can't tell what they are. Wait, um, oh my god! I, uh, uh, just realize uh, Anadol does have double sight. She can see in any darkness normally. Oh. Uh, well, in that case, um, you can see three kind of figures uh, that are uh, ducking down among the kind of, like, gaps in the, in the railing. Uh, as Estrella kind of uh, calls out, um, who are you? You see them kind of whispering to each other, um, and one of them kind of stands uh, and, and turns and looks to address you, um, and she kind of speaks out. I am Caramel Carry. Uh, another one kind of stands. I'm Licorice Larry. Uh, and a third one kind of stands up uh, and says, My name's Butterscotch Barry. Uh, and before you now are three strange individuals, one of them tall and gangly, uh, humanoid to a degree, but these figures seem to be made of candy, uh, which you can see kind of in the, uh, in the kind of pure light um, uh, Anadolsha, or in the kind of like pure dark vision that you have from your devil's sight, Anadolsha. Uh, and at this point, they all kind of deftly hop down over the balcony. Um, and they all kind of look at you, these these just strange things. Their bodies are, are very much like in the picture. It wasn't cartoonish. Uh, they actually appear to hold these kind of odd geometric shapes, but just a touch more humanoid faces kind of uh, appearing amongst uh, like the licorice. Licorice Larry here. We are the guardians of this ancient place. Uh, what brings you to our domain? Well, right now, I just want to draw you. Please stand a little more still. Ah, uh, uh, Geyser. You seek all reliable. We cannot allow you to go any further. We are the protectors of this place. Okay. You will corrupt it, as the Candy Kingdom has been corrupted. Well, we could just wait here for a moment. Give me a second. Yeah, we and we'll just... wait here for all eternity. Yes, we will. Uh, Excellent. And it was just pretty much already on the balcony because of uh, Molly's uh, spider climb. Um, all right, yeah, you've hopped up on the balcony. Uh, they're on the ground now, so you're just like above them. So yeah, uh, uh, Anadosha's probably, like, kind of like, conversing with Shuri, like, uh, What do you think about all this? Eh? <laughs> um. Uh, 
they kind of like lean in now, and, and they all look very nervous. Um, like this isn't something like they're the guardians of this place, but they've never had to actually be the guardians of this place. And they all kind of like lean in and start whispering uh, to each other a little bit. So you like, three uh, have been living here for how many years? Um, the they kind of look to each other. Uh, one of them looks down, kind of sad. Um. Uh, the other one kind of looks up at you uh, in the middle. The, the licorice man kind of looks at you. We've been here for ages. We have lost track of the time, but it has been over centuries. You and that Penelope quite the catch. Um, Penelope, <laughs> yeah, Penelope's just kind of looking. We have to see old Reliable. What, what you have down here is incredible. If... If this place, what we could learn from knowing about a place so pure of, of candy. I, I, I'm not a sweets connoisseur per se, but we cannot allow you to enter. And that is all that we will say on the subject. Additionally, we cannot allow you to leave, uh, says uh, Butterscotch Berry, uh, as uh, he kind of like, puts his hand down towards and uh, towards the ground uh, and you see it as they kind of uh, they kind of like take cues from him and look over at Barry um, and uh, they kind of go are, are you sure Barry we have to uh, they pff, kind of lift their hands up and out of the ground you see pff, uh, a huge kind of pile of chocolate uh, seems to like erupt and then move uh, as they've conjured some type of chocolate <laughs> elemental into the space, uh, which uh, as, it, uh, as it erupts. Uh, question. A wonderful board to draw. Well, wait, uh, uh, I have a question. Would that be considered a spell? Uh, no. <laughs> no, it is not. God darn it. Astraea sighs heavily and says, so you want to do this the hard way? There is only the hard way. Or you may spend all eternity here, but we cannot allow you to leave knowing our secrets. Okay, guys, just give me a second. I'm gonna finish this whether you fight or not. I know many secrets. Uh, I'm sorry, the second thought eating this chocolate thing. Um, and with that, I'd like you guys to roll for initiative as the chocolate elemental <laughs> kind of makes a uh, an odd chocolatey noise uh, and enters into the fray. No, uh, oh my god! Nice rolls! All I have is leggy boys for some reason. Uh, <laughs> Alright. Uh, oh wait, no, it says Earth Elemental, that's a lie. Uh, oh wow! He rolled a critical! Um, so the first to act in this instance is you, Anadolsha. Okay, so... Uh, yeah, so Anadolsha wants... Uh, I want to uh, confirm that... Uh, like, what is the environment we're all in currently? Like, like you stand in a hallway. There are lollipop lights along the sides, casting kind of dim light in the lower chamber. You're up above on the balcony, um, where you're kind of looking down on the scene. There's the three little, uh, there's the three little candy people that are uh, standing behind the big chocolate elemental. Uh, the total radius of the room you're in is, sorry, the total diameter is about thirty feet. It's a fairly confined space, and there's a huge double door leading into presumably all reliable from what you've garnered from these individuals. Uh, Penelope steps backwards as soon as initiative happens to let you guys do your thing. Um, I told uh, you! Uh, uh, where is the double doors that would like, lead they to... Are under, they are underneath the balcony. Uh, Alright. Okay, so I just want to make sure about that. Okay, so... Uh, first thing I would like to do is... Ca uh, yeah, I think I'll activate uh, my armor of Agathus at uh, uh, 3. Um, all right, uh, absolutely. Uh, you watch as uh, this kind of icy sheen appears over Andolcha's body as you've been magically protected. Uh, is there anything else upon your turn? Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see if I have a bonus action. Well, no, yeah, no, I don't. So, yeah, uh, that'll be all. So, Andolcha just sitting up there, uh, having, like, Lady Molly uh, getting ready to, like, move. Well, actually, how high is this place? Um... The, the total ceiling height, um, the ceiling's yeah. about 
uh, the door is about 20 feet up where the balcony is, and there's another 10 feet from the ceiling from the balcony. Okay, so yeah, uh, Anadosha will probably have Lady Molly move up to, uh, exactly to the top of the ceiling. Um, alright, uh, yeah, you get right up to the top of the ceiling. Uh, anything else on your turn? Let's see, that'll be all. Alright, uh, in that case, uh, it's the Chocolate Elemental's turn, uh, nope. which... None of us has shown aggression yet. Um, I just I, I don't know. know. I'm eating That's chocolate. You got chocolate. You have not shown. Uh, <laughs> you have not shown aggression, but the chocolate elemental is showing aggression as it runs over uh, towards you, who's kind of at the vanguard, Estrella, who's kind of drawn your weapon now. Uh, it kind of runs up and goes to uh, crash into you with its chocolatey fists. Uh, this is gonna make two attacks against. Oh wow. Do, uh, do both of those hit? What's your armor class? 18. Uh, I would like to cutting words one of those, if I could. Um, yeah, As my reaction. Yep. Uh, 1d6, which will, will just minus 1 either way. So minus 5 to the first one. Alright. I will use the uh, first so one. The, uh, the first one misses you, uh, and then the... Uh, uh, no, no, thank you. I'm eating you. You don't get to attack. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, right as, uh, right as you kind of... The elemental goes to punch into a straight. You just make the most baller and intimidating move. You just take a big bite of chocolate and put it in, and it just kind of, uh, from amongst its chocolatey form, you just kind of hear a, uh, uh, and the the shot swings wide. But then the other chocolate fist pounds into you, Astraya, hitting you for 16 points of bludgeoning damage. Goody. Um. And uh, that's all for the chocolate elemental's turn. Uh, that's going to bring us to. Uh, you, Estrella. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's, uh, it's Oldman before Estrella. What do you do, Oldman? How complete are my four drawings? Um, roll? Did you roll? <laughs> roll. Oh, wait, no, you... Yep, you didn't get... Um, you've got enough sketches. Uh, you've got enough of, like, an outline of their forms where you think you can fill in the details later if need be. Oh, why does this uh, always off of, happen? Off of memory. Okay. <laughs> So there's all four of them, correct? Uh, yeah, the little candy guys uh, are kind of like huddling together, kind of cowering a little bit behind the thing that they summoned. Well, uh, let's just wipe them all out! <laughs> oh, Jesus. Just crashing through, hitting all four of them! Uh, they're gonna make dexterity saving throws. Um, the chocolate elemental is great at those. Uh, the three goons are neutral at those. Uh, oh, wow. Uh, one of them succeeds uh, and takes half of the damage. Uh, the other two get thrown to the back wall as the tidal wave rushes through. Uh, um, uh, in order, uh, Caramel Kerry manages to stay on her feet, but Licorice, uh, but Licorice Larry and Butterscotch Berry both get <laughs> crashed into the big door behind, and you see both of them slumped down against it, unconscious. Uh, the Chocolate Elemental also gets thrown backwards and uh, knocked into the wall. Uh, that knocks back, right? It has to. It knocks down prone. Oh, knocks prone. Uh, never mind. They're knocked prone and unconscious. Uh, the other guy is also... Actually, he just takes half damage and then is also unconscious. Uh, so they are all just knocked down. Uh, and then uh, the elemental is also knocked prone. He's on the ground! Estrella, kill him! Uh, um, and it is Estrella's turn. Uh, unfortunately, I'm right in front of the elemental, so if I go... He's the only one that's still conscious! Um, the, uh, the elemental is prone, so you have advantage on your attacks. Yeah, I'm going to smash the elemental. My war pick. Swing away. You will have advantage. Oh, right. Crit yeah, fish you, you, you might yeah, crit. You got a crit fish. Yeah, you know, just in case. <laughs> no. Um, 23, 8 points of piercing damage. You uh, chunk down into the elemental and a big kind of piece of the chocolate uh, breaks off uh, and kind of clatters to the ground below. You'll want to... Uh, and, and then I'm to going to use a uh, goading attack. Ooh. Um, uh, to deal an additional 8 damage. So, oh man, 16 points of damage. Uh, and then we're going to make a wisdom saving throw. This chocolate elemental is extremely wise. <laughs> Um, I assume that fails? Yeah. Uh, and what happens? It has disadvantage on attacks against others until the end of my next turn. Okay, 
Okay, yeah, so, uh, Astraea, you're kind of, like, putting your, you're, you're putting your body on the line here, uh, in order to see that your allies are protected. Yep. Um, very good. Uh, that is going to then bring us to... That's been additional damage, just... Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I kind of have it. Um, and that is going to bring us to... Whoosh! I will, uh, lick my claws, and, uh... Sit back down, sit down, eating the chocolate. Then pull out uh, a wand from my bag. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see if I can. Because I need the chocolate melt enough, I can sort of dip the wand in the chocolate. I want these to be sort of chocolate flavored magic missiles if I can. Um, oh, I mean. Absolutely. <laughs> a- absolutely. Alright, uh, friend, expend three uses of the wand of orphan <laughs> Oh god, are any of you orphans? I mean, my, my parents died a long time ago! That uh, 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 well, right. no. Oh, wait, Anna, Anna Dolsha, aren't you an orphan? Like, by definition. Isn't that your backstory? Uh, not really. I mean, um, the, the closest thing to orphans that, uh, really my backstory would be my children that I adopted. <laughs> okay. Uh, in that case, you watch as the Wand of Magic Missile. Um, so it's level 3, I believe, so we times this by 5. Um, yep, yeah, so... Uh, I don't know why I did that, but anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I think that's that's correct. Uh, so you deal... Um, you deal now, the extra one damage I, I have with my bow tie, is that to each die? Like, each missile, or...? Um... This is the uh, we'll like your bow tie. Good attack and damage rolls, mate. So um, sure it's no, it's a, uh, it's, I think that's a one on, uh, it's a one on top. Uh, actually, you know what? No, I'll give it to you. Uh, wait, do you want to ask me if I'll give it to you? I'm not sure, because it's like one per uh, damage well, My roll. question is, would you like to appeal me and say, hey, I would like it to do work that way? But, but it's, it's, uh, sure. Uh, Pete, <laughs> would you, can my cho- extra chocolatey dippingness do more damage to the chocolate elemental? Yes, absolutely it can. Uh, the, uh, the magic missile's coated with chocolate, um, so on top of that, that's just an extra five automatic damage that happens on that. Uh, so that's a grand total of 16 points of damage as these chocolatey magic missiles course in and hit him, in particularly humiliating as being made of chocolate. I, I uh, think there's two more missiles to go with that. Um, no, I think that's... There was three yeah. missiles! Oh, whoops, sorry. <laughs> Because it's, it's level one, it's three missiles, and then I cast it at third level because I spent three charges, and that's two more missiles on top. So I just do that both plus plus uh. Four oh yeah, you're points. right. It's only two. Yep. So and then an additional. Plus oh yeah, eight. That's an additional four. Uh, so 16, 20 points of magic missile damage, uh, and then you watch as one of the magic missiles flies over and hits Lic- Lic- Licorice Larry right in the gut, uh, and while he's already down on the ground, he just kind of goes. Oh. Um, it's an I'm so sorry about your parents. <laughs> 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 uh, um, that's gonna bring us to. Uh, or sorry, do you have a bonus action? I hope uh, he was aware of that already. Yeah, no, I'll, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm happy sitting on the ground eating chocolate. Can I take one of the uh, lamps off the wall and I can start licking that, like the little um, lamps? Yeah, uh, you kind of go over and you'll have to make a. Uh, I'll, I'll let you do this as a free action or as a bonus action, but go ahead and make a uh, strength check to pull it up. Yeah, it's a strength save. Either it looks way, like it's fixed. Right. Yeah, you go up and pull it fixed on the wall in the chocolate. You can't quite break Stack. it off. You Stack think you we were like very close, uh, um, but the lollipop <laughs> remains uh, affixed. Uh, as we move now to the top of the initiative, which was you, Anna Dulcia. What do you want to do? Okay, so Anadosha will try to have Molly like kind of drop from the ceiling while she uh, uh, like attempts to hit the chocolate elemental with her butterfly net. Oh damn! Um, all right. Um, wisdom saving throw. Um. Oh yes. Uh, you just barely hit, uh, and Jesus, uh, you slam down the butterfly net on top of the creature, uh, and you watch as Anna Dolce's butterfly net pff, hits the, uh, hits the elemental, uh, and then it just shrinks down into a tiny little butterfly that's floating inside of the net, uh, and all the, there's no foe before you, there's just a, um, there's just 
three sleeping candy boys uh, and an elemental that is a butterfly. Uh, how long does uh, that last? Does that last forever or until you... Uh, uh, it's just, it's just until it leaves the birth on it, but I'm... Until you uh, lift it up. So, uh, this one is going to be doing, like, and the is actually going to leave the net on the ground where the butterfly is still in it, then bunch the uh, net around where the, the butterfly is still in the net, and just stick into a jar, uh, like, stick the net around over a jar and just cap it while it's, the net is still in the jar. Um, I don't understand. Can you repeat that action to me slower? Because I did not understand the thing you were trying to do. Pretty much, uh, Anadosh is going to bunch the, the net while it's on the ground. So the uh, butterfly is still in the net. Wrap okay, her- so you're trying to siphon um, you're trying to siphon the butterfly into the jar. Yes, and then, and then, and then tie the net around the jar so it's still just in there. No, uh, more like uh, like while the the, the bunch of uh, the net is in the jar, she's gonna cap the jar. Um, all right. Uh, what I'm gonna tell you to do right now is. This isn't super hard, but there's a chance of failure. And if you flub this up, the butterfly gets out of the net. Uh, but if you do it right, then uh, if you do it right, then you just have it. So I just need you to make me a sleight of hand check. Um, Which I should be good with those. Yeah, you have like a moment of pause right now as this is happening. You guys all are just looking at Anna Dolcia. Uh, uh, oh, Jesus. Uh, I was assuming that there was going to be some like inspiration around or whatever, but you just definitely hey. just... <laughs> Um, he just definitely popped the butterfly into the jar, uh, and, um, yeah, okay, you got a butterfly in the jar. Uh, Alright, so, uh, c- considering that the, uh, the jar is, uh, would it be airtight enough where the butterfly would suffocate? Um, you don't know? Alright, uh, well, in, in the uh, moment that it does suffocate, since it doesn't really count as damage... Uh, I mean, you can wait and see what happens on that. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much what I'm gonna do. Like, make sure that the jar is still capped, and she's just gonna carry it in a way where it's, the jar stays capped. All right. Um. So you have a butterfly in a net. Uh. And. Um. Yep. There's just three candy guys on the ground. Uh. They don't seem to be dead. They still seem to be like breathing. Uh. And then there is a uh, a big door. Uh, going to go over to the candy people, prop them up, use prestige dates, prestige, pre- clean them right. up a little. Uh, you, kinda, the station. you go over to uh, Caramel Carrie, uh, who's there on the ground. She's going to, oh, 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 what happened? Where's our chocolate elemental? No, you're okay, don't worry. And Dalton points to the jar where the, bur- the little bird was pretty much in it. Here's the chocolate elemental. Magic? You used magic on him? Dog, we should have seen that coming. We didn't prepare for magic. Uh, and Licorice Larry kind of calls out, uh, still on his back, laying on the ground. We're failures as guardians. Esther just face palms. Didn't you have, like, a thousand years to prepare? <laughs> <laughs> um, Make that and point. She, just say it. Um... You watch as Butterscotch Berry kind of sits up and looks at you. Um, we had a thousand years to prepare. Yeah, that's true. Uh, but, um, well, we weren't necessarily the best of our people. Um, and why were you chosen to guard Fountain, then? We're the last of our people. Ooh. Well, Larry, um, I guess it's no surprise that your parents are dead. <laughs> Uh, Larry, Licorice Larry goes, kind of just puts his licorice head down. He's very vertical. Uh, he's just like a tall piece of, uh, tall piece of red licorice. Uh, he just kind of looks down. Yeah. Okay, well, I hope you guys don't mind, but can you smile? I need to finish my sketch! Uh, you see Licorice Larry looks up at you and still kind of sad, very visibly sad eyes. His, like, the sides of his lip just kind of, like, turn up. Like, he's just doing the motion of a smile, and it's very pathetic looking. Oh, that'll do. Uh, and Caramel Carry oh. goes, I guess we can't stop you from going in. Uh, but are y'all good people? How'd you like a job cleaning out a house? I wouldn't. Um, <laughs> just don't take anything and don't tell anyone, please. We beg you. If... Well, if the Dark One found out, then this whole place would be ruined. Who's the Dark One? 
<laughs> Penelope, we got some important stuff over here. Ah, wait, 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 wait. Penelope kind of wait, wait. peers back out. Oh, what happened to the... What happened to the big thing? Oh, butterfly. That's very nice. Um, wait, 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 wait. Penelope, you're not this dark one. I'm going to try and pull the thing off the wall again. Um, <laughs> there you go. Oh, what, oh you, you, I mean, eventually you get it. You, you, you get a lollipop <laughs> down. Uh, oh, wait. Yeah, you got it on that one. <laughs> oh, yeah, you just shatter it off the wall. The chocolate breaks. Yeah, you yeah. get the chocolate off the handle. You got a, uh, a lollipop torch. Um, uh, and... You watch as kind of car Caramel carry. Um, well, you're so reliable. Uh, she walks up and kind of places her hands on the heavy chocolate door uh, and just kind of pushes it open. Um, and you are kind of blinded in this instance uh, by... Uh, you're kind of blinded in this instance by the light uh, of the space uh, as kind of along the walls of this kind of huge hollowed-out cave, um, there appears to be... Uh, for one, tons and tons of these kind of glowing lollipops uh, that are filling the cave with an incredible array of these bright and, and brilliant colors. Um, additionally, um, you see what appears to be string candy like grass that grows up, uh, a brilliant green, uh, and at the center of it, there is uh, a great kind of chocolatey, uh, a rock chocolate fountain, uh, and um, you can hear it kind of rumbling a little bit, and all surrounding it uh, appears to be a perfectly placid chocolate lake. Um, you hear the sounds of, of birds kind of chirping, uh, and as you're walking into this space, um, you see a few of them kind of uh, fly around, kind of like the top of the room. One of them lands down on uh, your arm, Anadolcia, uh, and you see it as just this kind of... Uh, it, it's a small blue bird, but the head of the bird is actually like a little piece of lollipop. Uh, the beak that's kind of sticking out of it looks like a, a candy corn that's on it. It's just these odd beings made out of candy uh, that are occupying the interior of the space. Uh, and the room before you is an incredible paradise. Um, and it is, uh, it's beautiful. What do you guys all do as you walk in? Uh, no. and Anadosha, at this moment, like, looking at the bird on her arm, she will uh, at least attempt to, uh, like, uh, like get in touch with her uh, patron, like, ask about it, if possible. Um, I had to have delicious the first time. Uh, you begin to kind of commune with your patron that lasts for a little while. Um, you kind of, like, uh, a bird lands on you and looks up at you. Uh, and it kind of like t turns its head to look at you curiously, uh, and then your big turtle mouth just, <laughs> you snap down, uh, and it's gotten to crunch. It is incredible. Uh, it is the sweetest. Did anyone like, see that? Can I stealth uh, that? <laughs> um, yeah, you can try and make a stealth check. Uh, I mean, it crunches pretty loudly. It's gonna be hard to avoid. No it's the <laughs> <laughs> um, Yeah, you kind of like look a little bit uh, shifty, um, and Licorice Larry, uh, kind of stands over next to you. Uh, he kind of puts his hand out, and a bird lands on his finger, and he does exactly the same thing, <laughs> and bites down on it. And just goes, it's fine. <laughs> um, and yeah, not sure. You can place cake and all. Oh, delicious. Mm. Um, the flavors. Wow. You enjoy the candy. You are, you are pure of taste buds as we are. That is good news. Uh, so you you will all promise to keep this place a secret, yes? That's up to her. Um, uh, yeah, sure. I don't even bother. Um, <laughs> looks to Anna Dolcia and to um, looks now to you, Estrella. Uh, they kind of turn their heads and look at you. Anna Dolcia's pretty much still uh, talk to Confection if she can. Um, all right, yeah. Um, you kind of go and, and speak to Confection. Go ahead and make me a. This is gonna be, a, I think, a religion check. Um, uh, Confectia seems to be otherwise occupied at the moment. Uh, in this yeah, uh, instance, uh, uh, I'm, uh, response. I'm just going to say, like, she probably like uh, gets just a minor in touch with uh, Confectia. I'm sorry, uh, the the girls are still uh, having fun with me. Talk to you later. <laughs> yeah, uh, um, absolutely. Yeah, you get you get the the voice. People cannot be connected. Um, but they look expectantly now at you, Estrella. You are sorry. This <clears throat> will you keep our secret? Um, this place is uh, quite different from the rest of the Candy Kingdom. It's uh, 
It's the way it was. So don't you want it to become like this again? Someday it will, but but not while the Dark One watches. And who is this Dark One? Um, and um, as you're kind of asking that question, there's uh, a little bit of a there's a little bit of a rumbling uh, from the ground, uh, and you watch as old uh, reliable um, kind of uh, begins to shake, and they go, "Oh, you should see it." If you're here, you should see it. Uh, and they kind of point, uh, and you watch as old reliable uh, explodes. Uh, now in this moment, and the chocolate kind of rings down. The sound is deafening, uh, and the smell of chocolate filling mm. the air is incredibly sweet. Um, uh, <laughs> old Bing gets a sketchbook ready. I'm very excited. And then, yeah. uh, in the moment after the kind of the, the chocolate falls, <laughs> uh, the, the space in the air all of a sudden. Um, in this kind of like, it was very warm and kind of comforting, but after the, the chocolate kind of fall, uh, and they kind of turn to you, uh, well, the, the dark one, uh, and all of a sudden, it feels, it feels colder, uh, and a chill wind seems to kind of whip up, uh, in the space, coming from the cave behind you. Ah, uh, no. it. <laughs> yeah, uh. and Osha's like, uh, uh, as soon as she starts feeling the cold, like she probably takes it as like, okay, time to get a good vantage point somewhere uh, on Molly, and she just tries to bolt up a wall somewhere. And I will move to where the entrance is and sort of stand there, trying to protect things. Oh, you're muted, Jeremy. You even have time to move. Oh. Little bits of snow begin to blow around down through the opening that you travel the icy wind begins to brush all around you and sends a chill shiver down your spine see little bits of snow and the wind begin to spin and twist almost dancing in the air around you before coalescing into a twisting writhing vortex of ice snow and wind a single set of red lit pupil becomes visible in it. Beneath a twisting smile white tooth with red and white candy cane fang forming. All of a sudden the vortex coalesces with a snap. The wind cuts out. The snow and the ice that had been filling the air fall. And a figure stands before you. Hair of blue flame Horns of jagged, twisting ice stretching backwards over his head. Frosty, pale skin, and a baby blue suit and gothic tailcoat, <laughs> fitting to its ever evidently regal and malicious bearing. The figure looks to you all and smiles. Ah. I was wondering when I would find. Uh, you are. Uh, I know this. I... Please keep that smile. <laughs> you see the three, uh, the three candy figures, kind of uh, at the back, just kind of cowering, kind of pulling up uh, as close as they can to the lake. Um, you hear Licorice Larry kind of uh, call out, "Please, it's all we have left." The Get a smile stretches wide. Can Anadosha, like, make some sort of check to, like, maybe even, uh, with Sugar's help, identify what this thing is? At the thought of that, the figure turns, turns toward you, Anadosha. I am the Duke of the Winter, and this is my... And now... I will do one better than I have done. And he takes one step toward the chocolate lake, and then another very I deliberate step. So almost like a, a stroll. Uh, almost uh, talking to himself more than you all. May I engage? Step. You want to attack him? Uh, I'd like to try and stand in front of him. <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah I, I think Estrella is also going to put herself between the lake and <laughs> the duke. <laughs> I need to finish my drawing. 
He smiles, laughs a bit to himself, and then he just takes a step forward, almost passing through you, an icy cold, biting to your bones. What? Um, and rematerializes directly behind you. This place has been forgotten for so long. But forgotten things are dangerous, you know. Someone finds them. Well, they're not quite as good as bodies. Uh, I look at the new guy that I... Wait, and Ocean's just like, uh, kind of like, nearing her eyes and just goes... You say forgotten things are dangerous. What of memories forgotten? Memories are intangible. They aren't something real. They're and yet... Real. We give ourselves their lives. And someday, perhaps... The pitiful people who still live in these mountains will learn. He watches the three kind of candied figures um, all kind of uh, gather, uh, forming as close as they can, as you did, trying to form a wall uh, between this individual and the fountain. Uh, I kind of want to attack him now. <laughs> and and, and those is already kind of ticked at him, but just saying, like, memories are tangible, <laughs> just like, yeah, she's just. She, she like looks to sugar and like kind of motions her to like kind of get uh, in a very good hiding place and then she'll just and uh, she doesn't care she's starting off with a eldritch blast you see the bolt of energy pass directly through him little bits of snow just kind of blasting off um, and the whole but, refilling um you see penelope at the back who was kind of um, before looking around at plants and kind of observing the candy is, is walked over back to the threshold that you came she calls out I think perhaps we should leave oh you don't want to see the fruits of your labor Manella you brought me here after all led me the way rebuilt their movement. I think we should leave can I run to the geyser? Yeah. Can I jump in the, to the geyser? Uh, yeah, absolutely. You just dive into the geyser as you do so. Uh, a huge kind of explosion of, of warm, incredibly sweet chocolate erupts around you. Okay, that's what I expected to happen for a while. <laughs> he, he walks over toward the chocolate lake of which the geyser is in, and he just kind of reaches down and sticks one finger into the chocolate, holds it up to his mouth, licks it with an icy blue pointed tongue, and scrunches up his face in disgust. Can you hold that pose? <laughs> no. He flicks a little bit of chocolate off his wrist, and with just a breath, a bit of icy, cold frost fuses out and begins to roll over the chocolate. As it does, it begins to freeze, harden, begin to crack behind. And Whoosh, I think, is in it, so Whoosh, yep. he starts to feel kind of cold. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's, that's, well... Uh, things are going sour, so I just gotta hop in my shell and hope for the best. <laughs> no! no. Uh, oh, and uh, Ocean's just gonna cry out at the Duke of Winter to say, You know what? Such a bitter existence must be a pretty sad one. I'm not bitter. Oh, but you make things bitter. No. I make things cold. I make things. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have things. You're all invited, if you'd like, to visit me in my ice castle at some point in the I'm sure you'll have it plenty. I'll hold you to that. Flashes you a smile. Again, his kind of short candy cane uh, white and red striped fangs. 
distinct feature on his otherwise plain and cold. But yeah, he just turns and begins to walk away. The little tails of his uh, of his gothic uh, gothic coat kind of flapping behind him in the icy wind. Uh, he takes maybe a dozen steps before just kind of dissipating into icy wind and snow. However, the cloud of frost continues to roll over the lake as if it's just freezing up. Uh, and Osha will, like, kind of get down to the ground as fast as possible and get as close to the lake as possible. Mm-hmm. H- how fast is it freezing over? Uh, it's rolling over pretty quick. Um, okay, so, uh, and Osha will probably cry out to the candy people. And I says, uh, can y'all still control the chocolate elemental? Um... You see the candy people, uh, and, and you watch as the candy individuals, um, I don't think we can. And they seem to be freezing and hardening and becoming just chunks of, uh, just blocks of ice in the same way that you see, uh, the land around you is. Uh, Licorice Larry kind of looks to you, and Butterscotch Berry, who's almost completely frozen, Hurry! Uh, and she's just gonna take her butterfly net, which has this jar still attached on it, and break the jar open. Um, all right, yeah, you just smash the uh, the jar on the ground. The chocolate elemental kind of uh, courses out. Uh, you see it kind of whip up, uh, and as it uh, kind of appears on the scene, it uh, you see as steam kind of begins to pour off of it uh, as the cold affects it and it kind of uh, shifts down into kind of a melted chocolate, a thing you did not see it do before, uh, and goes over and kinds of, kinds of sweeps over the candy people, kind of encasing them in its form. Well, I guess now that there's nothing to draw, I'm gonna take out my meal, throw it out, <laughs> and uh, sever the flame! You conjure a huge uh, torrent of flame over the space. Uh, it uh, rages out. You you watch as um, um, you kind of uh, watch as it kind of courses over some of the uh, uh, over some of the the frosted uh, grass uh, and some of the uh, the birds that were flying around have just frozen in place. Some of them have fallen and shattered uh, for a brief moment. Um, for a brief moment, it seems to to thaw to a degree and even singe uh, with the intensity of the um, uh, with, with the intensity of the flame. But in a brief moment, the storm left by this kind of figure still raging, uh, it pulls up and kind of refrosts uh, on its own. This place, something has happened to it. And also, uh, uh, actually, I do have a question. Uh, would you allow like a alternate uh, use of a Bastel curse? Um, explain. Like, I want to be able to like curse the the lake where it, it won't be completely frozen over, but at the same time, it will not it will be no longer be sweet. Um, uh, that is, is that... um, that is beyond your skill. Uh, especially with just the bestow curse spell, which can only target a, a creature. If it was like a, a creature target, um, maybe something weird. But well, uh, what about the chocolate elemental? Um, the chocolate me- elemental, you can cast a bestow curse on. Um... But uh, like, uh, all right. I mean, uh, hopefully it'll be able to like stay warm, but be no longer sweet. But that's just my that's just my wish- wishful thinking. <laughs> Um, the, the chocolate elemental, you kind of go to cast this curse on it, um, and uh, it seems like the thing that you're kind of doing um, is maybe a little bit outside of uh, the, just the realm of the bestow curse spell. Um, you would have to, like, that's more probably in the realm of something like, you know, you would have to learn at a higher level or, or gain through maybe a performance choice. Uh, but as you uh, kind of go and cast this this uh, bizarre bestow curse on the elemental, um, it does kind of allow it to seep into it. Uh, and you see it's uh, it's doing its best. It's getting kind of uh, frost is kind of uh, picking up uh, and covering its arms, but it's uh, it's kind of 
melting itself and growing hot and trying to keep itself moving as it's moving these three candy people uh, inside of its body along with it and it's uh, just it's just trying to survive in this now harsh environment which does not seem to be affecting you in the same way it's cold bitter cold but your bodies are not being frozen like the candy in the space is uh, uh, can, uh, can I actually uh, I know it was a long shot but ask the chocolate ele- elemental to like somehow get them as far get the candy people as far out as possible um go ahead and make a persuasion check I'm gonna give you advantage And I think while that's going on, Astrea is going to try to rescue Woosh. Um, Oh my god, I forgot about Woosh. Yeah. (laughs) It's her job to make sure everyone gets back safe and sound in one piece, so... Astrea, uh, Astrea, you run over uh, across the now frozen chocolate lake. It's it's easy to just kind of pass, uh, and you move up to the geyser, uh, and you can feel the geyser rumbling deep beneath, despite being frozen, uh, and... Um, you see Woosh's body, just kind of like the top of Woosh's shell. Uh, Woosh, you're still kind of holding your breath at this moment, hoping for something, but the top of Woosh's spell, uh, shell is kind of sticking out. What do you do? The rumbling under the ground is, is intensifying with each crack, uh, passing moment. It's cracking various things as the ground shakes, uh, and then causing it. Australia, you're there. What's the play? I'm going to take out my hammer and pittens from my Dungeoneer's pack Excellent. and start uh, making uh, like a little ice hole, fishing hole thing around his shell. Um, all right, go ahead and um, uh, go ahead and make me a... Um, uh, this is a strength check, but I'm going to give you proficiency with it because of your, like, weapon proficiency. This is just, like, finding weak points on a person. Uh, so go ahead and roll me strength. So I guess make me just an attack roll. It's oh, okay. Here. But it'll be this, it'll be essentially be an attack roll. It's counting as a skill check. Oh. Uh, 14? Uh, no, no, that's fine. Uh, you are kind of striking around uh, the area, and Woosh's shell is hard enough that you don't need to be overly cautious uh, where you're striking. You you strike into it a few times. There's a couple of chips in Woosh's spell, uh, chips that you assume that uh, he'll forgive you for later on as you break the kind of chocolate around yeah. him. Um, It'll grow back, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're uh, you're getting there, but it's not quite done yet, and the rumbling under the ground is getting even uh, louder and louder. Uh, as uh, at this point, um, as you kind of say that uh, over at Anadolia, uh, as you say that, you watch as the uh, the chocolate elemental begins just kind of like rolling and rushing out of the cavern. Um, you also uh, see as Penelope sees it go by, and Penelope just starts, "I'm leaving. You should you should run as well." Uh, she just kind of rushes and goes to run out of the cavern. One of the and, candy birds falls out of the sky dead next to Anadolia. Uh, uh, is it completely dead or is it like frozen so far? Shattered, I believe. It oh. probably shatters in the ground. Yeah. Well, would it be possible to wait? Would it be possible to catch it be- before it actually uh, shatters? Uh, go ahead and make a deck save. Am I free enough to stick my hands out and touch uh, the one trying to release me? Um, Astrea. Uh, you're inside of your shell, and you're kind of like locked into your shell now. So this one's probably just on Astrea. You can hear though. You could use inspiration if you wanted okay. within your shell yeah. under the thing. No, no, I, I have a plan to escape. I just want to be able to touch him. I have um, to touch yeah, him. your your hands aren't quite free yet. Uh, and Adulsh, you hold your hands out. You the bird kind of uh, you you catch the bird in your hand, uh, and the bird just shatters on your hand as you go to grab it. Okay. That, it is that fragile, Oldman. I am going to run over to the side of the geyser. I'm going to tell Estrella to get out of there. Um, and Australia, then... uh, what are you doing, Estrella? Uh, are you just going to keep at it? What's 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 your play? Uh, the rumbling well, grows more and more. Then, <laughs> once the hole is big enough, I want to reach in and scoop. I shop. Can I finish my thing? What's the play? I'm going to use benign transformation. Trans- <laughs> Transportation to switch spots with Woosh. Oh, wonderful! Um, so and then immediately Misty step back. Um, oh. So you just kind of like swap spaces, like Australia. Your pick. You're about to go down and get Woosh out again, uh, and then you just see Oldman kind of uh, weirdly curled up into a ball in the empty <laughs> space where um, 
uh, in the empty space where it was, uh, and you kind of stop, and then Oldman just turns into a puff of smoke and uh, zips out of the space, and you're just like, oh, Jesus. I'm like, come on, Astrea, hurry up! Uh, and uh, Astrea, at this point, I need you to make me a, uh, a dexterity saving throw. Yeah. Huh. Also a befuddlement saving throw. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> 14. All right. You manage to duck out of the way as the geyser underneath you, which has been rumbling and getting louder and louder, <laughs> explodes again. Uh, and this time, as the kind of chocolate pours up, the chocolate, it, it's devoid of color. It is this kind of just very washed out uh, kind of tan color almost as it pours. Uh, and as it pours, it cr crashes downwards, you kind of running ahead of it. Uh, and... Uh, instead, since there's no lake for it to fall onto, it just begins to core and force and fill up the space that you're in uh, as the geyser just continues and continues to erupt. Uh, and you see at the back of it, uh, as the chocolate kind of explodes out of it, uh, it's like freezing with each new place that it reaches, uh, just filling up this, the, the place very quickly, it looks like, with frozen chocolate, uh, sealing this place almost like a tomb. Um, this is threatening all of you very greatly. What do you all do? Uh, uh, at this point, for... Actually, if I may make a recommendation, you guys are, will be sealed in here if you do not, like, run and get out. Yeah, uh, and Osha, like, calls yeah. to uh, Sugar Frost where she uh, said to hide earlier, and as soon as they're together, uh, she has Molly just dash out of there as fast as possible. All right, you begin kind of running down the corridor. Um, everyone else kind of, like, um, what is everyone else doing? Do any of, like, any last things you want to do in the chamber? Yeah. Is like Astraea still in the pit? No, he's now running. Yeah, Astraea ducks out of the pit with the explosions. A nice deck save. Uh, and is Wizard still there? Like in the with me with the shell? Um, in the what? Are we still in the cave? Old man with Wizard face and Woosh, correct? Um, yep. Old man uh, yeah. and Woosh are both still in there. Come out of my shell. Walk over to Mick Wizard face. Can pull out <laughs> yep. a pair of scissors. All right. <laughs> 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 You mentioned all 500 feet towards the exit. Um, you know, an eye for an eye. <laughs> um, you just dimension door. It wasn't even that long that you went down to get there in the first place. So you're just <laughs> back in the cinnamon mines where you came out. Uh, as you dimension door <laughs> uh, all the way across, just scissors cuts in reality. Astrea, um, as Anna Dilsh was ahead of you, you're now just like alone in this moment, uh, running from this chocolate geyser. Wait, uh, before I leave, can I haste Australia? Yes, absolutely. And say, I uh, didn't forget about you! <laughs> uh, magically emboldened Australia, uh, and your speed is now doubled, uh, but you are the, um, you are the last one. Is this chocolate, this frozen chocolate, uh, just seems to like pour in behind you, uh, in a strange array where the chocolate will freeze and then pff, uh, break as new, as new kind of molten chocolate passes through, uh, and then freeze again, uh, kind of uh, forming chunks behind you as you run down the, um, uh, as you, uh, run down the, uh, the hallway. Um, Australia, uh, since everyone else, like, had such a big jump, uh, and you are just kind of this one person without magic here in this moment, I need you to make me an athletics check as you run down the hallway, uh, to, like, keep pace and move ahead of this chocolate. Oh, boy. Can he get advantage because he's hasted? Yeah, absolutely. You have advantage because you're hasted. Oh, good. So that was an eight. And that was even worse. No, so God, I got an eight. No! Uh, um, Anastasia, would you like to. Can I give him my inspiration by chance? Um, not at this moment because you're 500 feet ahead of him, but. Um, Australia, you're running along and you're just barely keeping pace with it. Each time it kind of comes up behind you, uh, like it washes like right at your back, you feel it, and then it pff, freezes and stops, and then right at your back and it freezes and stops. Yeah. You're barely keeping ahead of it as you pff, uh, bungle out uh, and kind of just pff, dash out into the hallway where the cinnamon mines are far ahead. Uh, but right as you do, you feel the wave of chocolate pff, uh, overtake you uh, in this instance, uh, and it pff, wraps around you, and you're kind of just frozen at the entrance to the Thinnaman Mines, like your arms reaching outwards and like the front of your body, uh, the back of your body in case, but the front of it free. Uh, and another last wave of ch chocolate is going to emerge, filling up this cave. Uh, but all of you now see uh, Astrea there kind of frozen right at the edge, like right at this last moment where you got caught. Uh, you all have one round to save Astrea in this moment. Uh, Astrea who leaves no one behind. Uh, what do you all do? Uh, and uh, uh... 
Well, uh, Strayo, you have an action too if you have something you can do. Uh, but you're right now kind of restrained uh, by the uh, by the frozen chocolate, and it will overtake you if you don't get out this round. W would the chocolate count as a, in this moment as a structure or a similar? Um, yeah, absolutely. All right. Uh, make wizard face. Can you do that speedy spell again? You only run stuff. <laughs> Alright, this might be risky, but I need you to make me really fast! We're 500 feet away, I'm not sure if I'm even gonna uh, reach. Uh, uh, oh no, uh, this, is at, this is at where you are. Oh, this okay, is thank like, god. <laughs> yeah, you're right, you're right there. Uh, you see Astraea what? just about to burst through to the space where you what were. What is Astraea wearing? Like, her um, armor why? Astraea? Chainmail armor? Oh, that's fantastic. Let's hope we can melt that, shall we? It's gonna hurt. Oh god. Um, <laughs> Oh, uh, there's, there's uh, no con uh, save, but anyway. <laughs> uh, do you choose to, like, Australia, you just take nine points of fire damage as your armor grows incredibly hot, uh, and then you watch uh, as the chocolate around you just kind of melts, uh, and you uh, stagger forward a little bit, but catch yourself out of the frozen chocolate, uh, and you are now kind of free to move. Are you still up after that, though? I know you took a big hit before. Yes. Okay. Screaming and burning in pain. I right, think she's going to strip it. off the armor. Um, Too long, don't run. Yeah, um, that, that takes a long time, but Woosh can, right, you can, just, end it, the, you can just end the spell. Oh, that would be helpful. <laughs> right. uh, and you kind of call a run uh, as you guys all kind of book it down the last stretch down the cinnamon mines. The chocolate's, uh, the chocolate's movement is kind of slowed a little bit as the cinnamon mine has all sorts of uh, various corridors and things around it that it can kind of siphon off into so you're able to get out. And as you move out, you see Penelope already outside, uh, hands on her knees, kind of uh, heaving out of breath. Uh, and as you merge, you watch as a few last chunks of chocolate pour out of the entrance to the cinnamon mine and then freeze in place. The mine's now completely frozen over and gone. As soon as Estrella catches her breath, she's going to grab Penelope and lift her, like, up. She's a dwarf, right? So she's shorter yep. than Estrella. Yep. Uh, so she's going to lift her off the ground, basically, and she's going to say, Why did you lead him here? I didn't know. I just wanted to find... It was a promise of a paradise. I'm a... I'm an explorer. I'm a researcher. I find things. That's what I do. Well, I got my drawings. I'm here. happy. Um. And it also wants to look to uh, Stray and says, It's not her fault. If anyone's to blame... It's the Duke of Winter. And I'll say that Adosha does have like uh like tears in her eyes. You know, just like after that whole bird and just the, everything being lost. The, uh, right now she's kinda looking around for the chocolate elemental and the candy as well. The candy um, people. You see it's it's no longer in sight. It is just kind of rolling in this ever kind of uh roiling blob just away from the place. Uh, just off into the candy wilderness in the distance. Um, some of the dwarves are kind of, like, running over from the, the campsite not too far away and starting to kind of, like, ask questions uh, and, and gather things up. Penelope, as you drop her, Estrella just sits out of breath, shocked, scared. And with that, I believe this adventure uh, comes to a close. Uh, you have succeeded in your adventure. Uh, each of uh, you apologies, are... Estrella. I will heal for ten. <laughs> that's that's okay. Right now, Estrella is pretty angry. Uh, um, uh, what, what's the that, the name of the Duke again? The Duke, Duke of Winter. And Estre Estrella is not the only one who's angry. You could uh, you could probably tell. Okay. Uh, you know, and though she's a doll, you probably at least sense it in her. <laughs> So now there are two people on Australia's blacklist. Holly Tildrum of... and the Duke of Winter. <laughs> I got a bunch um, of amazing drugs. I'm happy. I like that Holly Tildrum and the Duke of Winter are on the same list. Yes. <laughs> yes, they are. In Australia's mind, they are equal. <laughs> I'm going to be spending the next month working off this damn chocolate. Um, you each gain 200 Bartholomew bucks, and you each gain a point of experience. Yay. Um, you, uh... Have been successful, although what this bodes for the land of D&D &D time 